And I'm so glad that you're doing this piece. Tell us a little bit about this, about her, for the listeners who don't even have a clue who Lena Baker is. Yes. Well, to be very brief, because I have a tendency to digress, but this is another ironic story. It came to me from a fellow who used to run the prison project Mm -hmm. in uh, a very small town in Georgia. And I Mm -hmm. met him through a a friend of mine who's very involved with prison reform, et cetera, et cetera. So Mm -hmm. he mentioned, or actually he was, uh, John is his name, Mm -hmm. He was working with the family of Lena Baker to try and and get some type of exoneration from the state of Georgia because had she been tried today for that same crime, it Mm -hmm. more than likely it would have been self-defense. There would have been an integrated jury. It wouldn't have lasted an hour, her trial, and she wouldn't Mm -hmm. have been executed, right? So So my friend Ray, who introduced me to John, he's sort of a fan of mine, if you will, he he told me about this story of Lena Baker and John's involvement and suggested that I get in touch with John. I got in touch with John. He tells me all about it, and I'm starting to follow him and his work with the family. And then he says, well, I'll just send you a copy of the transcript, the trial transcript, a copy of it. Wow. It's, wow. It's 10, page, it's 10 pages long. 10 pages. It, it's 10 pages long. And the, the 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 entire length of the trial, I think, was less than a day. It, I, it wasn't even a full work oh. day. Let's, let's oh say my. it was like five or six days. Uh, excuse me, oh. five or six a- uh, hours. And of course, the jury was comprised of twelve white men. Of course. So, you know, she, and and at that time, there were miscegenation laws still in place in mm. in Georgia, and her crime, her real crime, was having an affair with a white man. Whom she but wasn't it where he, he kind of pulled her and, and held her, for lack of a better term, hostage in some private place? And obviously, she, I think she was trying to protect herself. And isn't then the gun went off? Or is, is, are those facts that was within yeah. the report? Yeah. Well, we'll see this. I'm, again, I'm, I, I'm digressing because the story is so compelling and there's so many elements to it. So the bottom, uh, the, uh, the 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 a real quick background: Lena Baker had uh, was born, had been sort of a domestic and run a brothel, even for which she spent some time. I think maybe six months in a okay. local jail and just sort of a a, a hard life. Uh, I, I don't want to say typical, but Sort uh-huh. of indicative of the time, all right? It was ni- yes. 1900, she was born, so the early part of the ni- 1900s, the 20th century, she's dealing with racism, uh, yes. single parenthood, lack of education, lack yes. of opportunities. She is hired by uh, the son of E.B. Knight. This is the man whom she would uh, end up caring for for about two years and mm-hmm. subsequently have an affair with him. Okay. Uh, they were both alcoholics, and okay. and he was considerably older than she. I think he was maybe she was about fifty. He was about fifty seven. She was about forty five. So about twelve year difference. Yeah. And he owned a mill in this very small town in Georgia called Cuthbert. And he wasn't mm-hmm. well liked. He was a widower and yada yada yada. And he and 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 Lena in, began to have a sexual relationship. She okay. would go to his mill, they would drink, they would get drunk. And then he would also, he kept her as a sex slave. So there were times mm-hmm. when he would lock her mm-hmm. in the mill. Now, this is a woman who lived with her own mother and had mm-hmm. three children. Wow. So it was a real codependent, very, very psychologically wrought relationship. Well, very one com- day he went off to um, uh, Sunday meeting. You know, he went off to some kind of re- revival with his son and kept her locked in the mill for maybe a night or so, a, a night, Sunday night and Saturday night into Sunday. He comes back. They have an altercation. It appears as if he was about to strike her. There was a gun. It was his pistol. She, I guess he, that was, no, excuse me. He had pulled a gun on her. She rested it you know, got it away from him and accidentally shot him. But as she maintained to her dying breath, what I did, I did in self-defense. Yes. 
Okay, so the Lena, the story, are you doing that at a theater? Are you doing that? Where, 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 what's happening with that? Well, it's actually still in development. Uh, okay. And what okay. I'm, 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 I'm collaborating with a filmmaker. Great. And what, and, and I became interested, I'm also interested in film. So then I met him, his name yes. is Joey. I met him yes. a couple, uh, several months ago, and there's this whole idea of expanded cinema, which is simply taking cinema and incorporating it into other mediums, and yes. what better medium but, but than theater. And so, One. I, you know, I met with him about another project, and then I told him about Lena Baker, and he's a social worker by day and a filmmaker yes. always, you know, and he's an incredible uh, experimental filmmaker in his own right. And yes. we just connected, and then he, he, I told him about Lena Baker, and he's like, oh, no, we got to work on this. Definitely, this we, and, and I'm going to continue. And that's how, yes. yeah. No, you so finished. It's still, it's still, it's still, we're still, it's still in good. development. 